So Gordon Sondland had a couple of big lines. One was summarized, I imagine, in a way that we're gonna remember for a very long time. On the literal front page of the New York Times, we followed the president's orders. That's, I'm sure, knowingly from the New York Times point of view, that's like a Nixon era front page right there that they're making in real time. And that's huge, that should be case closed, but it's not because we live in a, in a ridiculous world. Here's the thing though, uh, to have gotten that message, you have to read the New York Times or at least pass by one. And not everyone does, some people get their news from other sources. So what if hypothetically you weren't getting your news from the paper of record? What if you were getting it from foxnews.com? Well, that sort of we follow the president's orders headline, that was all over places like CNN and MSNBC, lots of places were, were talking about that, but not Fox. Fox had headlines like this, so this is literal front page Fox News throughout yesterday. So one is President Trump declares it's all over for impeachment inquiry after Sondland testimony. So. Okay, he did say that, that's technically true. And I've been really frustrated to see a bunch of tweets to that effect, just saying Trump says it's over. Like, okay, I think he might be a little bit biased. Like if Obama had said it's all over on Benghazi, we're, we're done with this thing. Would that be the front page of Fox News on that? I kind of doubt it. But that's what uh, took up that real estate for an hour or two. Later on, they had uh, follow live. Sondland says Hunter Biden's board role clearly looks like conflict of interest. Because they are trying to sustain, like what is there, 2% of America that thinks that Hunter Biden's an important part of this story. And they are trying to beam directly into the eyeballs of those people, um, their take on the news. Uh, they go on to say, follow live, Jordan pins Sondland for omitting Trump's key language from opening statement. Fox News is apparently the only person who's actually satisfied with uh, uh, Jim Jordan as a strong defender of the president there. No, Jordan is coming across as emotional and you know, like jumping from one point to another, not, not being qualified for the position that they've pulled strings to get him into. And yet Fox News has to pretend that they're very satisfied with it too. So look, regardless of which part of this that they're focusing on, if it's Trump's weird performance during Chopper Talk or Jim Jordan or Hunter Biden, the important thing is they couldn't actually just clearly show what Gordon Sondland said. This guy who's a huge fan of Donald Trump, like we've said many times, gave him a million dollars. They have to pretend like he's some sort of antagonistic anti-Trump guy, and you can't get the actual true information from him. But that's not that surprising after all, it is Fox News. What was a little bit more surprising was even the New York Times, who I gave credit to a little bit earlier, they have allowed Donald Trump to control this narrative in a way that never should have gotten off the ground. And that has to do with the, the, you know, the big Sharpie uh, printout of the phone call that he had with Gordon Sondland saying, I want nothing, I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. Everybody keeps just saying that as if, oh yeah, that's another phone call like the others with Sondland. Just put that in the context of from May to September, there were a bunch of phone calls. No, the timeline in this case is incredibly important. And so when people leave it out, that's an issue. And not just people like Fox News, the daily, uh, the podcast, uh, Michael Barbaro had this to say. So the most senior figure and the most involved figure in all of this from the Trump administration, who declares that this was a quid pro quo, he's talking about Gordon Sondland there, is simultaneously testifying that the president gets on the phone with him and says, this is no quid pro quo. That is complicated. Nicholas Fandos, their congressional correspondent responds, it is, it's very complicated. And if you're listening at home and listening to Republican questioning, they're able, I think, to raise some doubts about this account that he's giving. No, no, The Daily, what are you talking about? That phone call wasn't in May, it wasn't in June or July, it was on September 9th. It was later in the day where the White House found out that the whistleblower had given his concerns to other people and this thing was exploding around them in real time. So yes, Trump finds out whistleblower says you've been up to no good. And so Trump gets on the phone, calls up Sondland and says, I don't want a quid pro quo. That's not exculpatory, that's damning when you know the timeline. That doesn't make Trump look better, that makes him look way, way worse. That in a rush, an emergency move, he calls up Sondland and tries to get Sondland to agree with his interpretation of what happened. And the daily leaves that out, doesn't say what day it was. For all we know, maybe it was in July, I don't know. It was back during the the, the negotiations with Ukraine, who knows. Trump all along was really clear that he doesn't want a quid pro quo. And the New York Times write up about that uh, Trump conversation, the chopper talk thing, that also didn't mention the timeline. How could you leave that out? That is literally the only important piece of information on that. 
Trump has a horrible day with the Gordon Sondland testimony. He comes out with his account of this phone call to try to hijack the narrative. And the New York Times, let alone Fox News, we don't expect anything of them. But New York Times helps him to do that by hiding literally the most important piece of information. And people who should know way better are assisting the president in hoodwinking the American people. That is truly depressing. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.